Bill, you did an amazing little short the other day uh, on your Instagram feed and the other social media feeds that the SDFLC has uh, regarding that it was raining. In fact, you did it both in Spanish and English, I noticed, which was pretty cool. In fact, the Spanish one's gotten more views than the English one. And I wonder (laughs) if it's because just here in San Diego, we don't get much rain. But in the last week or so, we did get a lot of rain and there was so much flooding from backed up drains and just the fact that we had a once in a decade rain uh, a couple Mondays ago and our rivers overflowed. There were people, neighborhoods that were, uh, that were literally in boats and, you know, running for their lives. It was pretty crazy. The amount of flooding that was in certain parts of San Diego. And there's so many people that, their houses were flooded, their businesses were flooded, um, and thinking that they're going to go right to insurance and that is going to be covered. And lo and behold, maybe not. And I think we're finding now that it's starting to rain here again, uh, whether it's El Nino or whatever it is, but our West Coast is getting pummeled. We need to take a look and see, yes, we have insurance, but does it actually cover damage if it's mother nature or an act of God, so to speak? Yeah. I think that the flooding really caught people off uh, by surprise. I think it was the fourth or fifth rainiest day in the history of San Diego. So the flooding, you know, if you're a San Diegan, you know that when we get rain, there are areas that will flood. Uh, Mission Valley comes to mind. Every time there's rain, there's street closures, there's potential flooding. You got flooded parking lots, the whole thing. This was so so much rain that it flooded areas that I'd never seen flood before. Uh, you know, I, I know in our podcast, we talked to Ray Russell. Uh, if you haven't listened to it, check it out. Uh, Life is Life, wherever you Oh, the video podcast. she put up or the picture and she put the up The video crazy. she put in front of her house where it, her street was like a river. Yeah. I've driven that street. You know, my parents grew up uh, around the corner from where she lives now. Um, I drove that street thousands of times and i never even realized the water flowed through there like that so uh it's just you mentioned the insurance and and that can get really tricky and you know it unfortunately may not cover uh floods so without most you taking time it's the not especially step. if you're a renter and and let's uh, most a lot of renters don't have renters insurance in the first place which they absolutely should penny right. wilder penny foolish Wait, penny wise and dollar foolish, so to speak, because you're one, you just you need it for all the articles that you have in in your home and in your car, by the way. But that doesn't mean it's covering everything, especially if it's coming from Mother Nature. Yeah. And the renter's insurance, it's not expensive. I mean, when we were at the apartment before her house, I want to say it was 20 something dollars a year. Right. <laughs> it wasn't a very expensive policy by any means and you just add it on to your in our case to our auto insurance right and, and you bundle it and it's cheaper that it, way yeah. so you know it is important if you're a renter to to realize that your things are not covered under the homeowner's insurance you have to go out and get your own uh, to cover your belongings but yes like you said the flood unless you add on a flood like a ride along or a take out a separate flood insurance um nature flooding may not be covered now a pipe bursting and everything flooding that's a different story right but if we're talking mother nature like you actually you mentioned like one of the acts of god and that kind of thing that the insurance says and that that very well is not going to be covered so definitely not read everything um, from yeah and from this perspective I did, I had a leak in my house in a pipe that had been old and it was structurally just it weakened. And apparently it was in the construction. There was a nail that had been in the pipe for a long time. It just slowly rusted out. And then it started to slow leak. Um, Thank goodness found it early enough. That was covered under my homeowner's insurance. But if for some reason I had some drains um, that are in my backyard or in the area surrounding uh, which is the county's responsibility and those things, those drains, which is what happened to these neighborhoods are clogged and they're just not maintained because we get so little rain that right. it's kind of an afterthought. And then when we do, 
wow, it it really showed that these these drains weren't functioning uh, the way they're supposed to. And then th- those neighborhoods and those people living in those neighborhoods get crushed, uh, which is really unfortunate. But that's something you should do is look and see if you yourself need to be have an insurance. And I know that there is something that you can do through FEMA to look and see if you possibly are in a flood zone uh, that you it might warrant you getting some insurance. And yeah, I mean, why not take a look? Yeah, you go on the FEMA website, you enter your address or just your zip code and kind of you get a map and you get the different zones in there. And as, as you can see. Uh, and, yeah, so and Phil, this happens to be things. my neighborhood. Um, and, and I live like right over in here somewhere. So I'm lucky me, I'm not in really a flood zone, uh, unless this little, um, Lake. body of water decides to, to overflow, but I've never seen that even come close to happening. Um, but right down here below us in the high school here is a flood zone. Um, and it seems that, um, you know, there's only a few places in this neighborhood that would be really in danger uh, of flooding. So it may not be something that our area needs to look at, but this is a great website to go to, to see if maybe this is something you need to look into. You know, this is over in the national city area of San Diego. Oh and, man. And they did get hit pretty yeah, hard. And and you have different, uh, they got all kinds of different colors. Uh, there's a riverbed that runs through here. So that definitely has uh, a lot to do with it, but uh, you know, just kind of take a look around and and see what is how much of a risk. You'll notice some of this is very low risk. Like this is a one right. percent chance of flood annually. So they're not really, you know, not all the colors. But are still, it might be but, worth when you look at that. Go, okay, there is a chance, but insurance wouldn't be very expensive to hand that off because it doesn't happen very often. Correct. So, but it, it's worth looking into. It is. And and definitely pay attention to weather and local guidelines. And if you're being told to do something, whether it's evacuate or pick up some sandbags or, you know, those kinds of things, he pay attention. <laughs> take take full. You know, sometimes I think uh, it's easy. Well, it, it hasn't happened before, but just because it hasn't happened before doesn't mean it can't happen. I yeah, I think we're finding that out uh, more and more, you know, that these these events do happen. We live in California. Earthquakes do happen. Um, they happen a lot. We just don't feel them very often. But that is a separate insurance as well. And there are certain areas of Southern California that are more expensive for earthquakes because they're more, more vulnerable. So it's the same kind of thing. Everybody's, you know, Florida, the South, they have their tornadoes and they have their hurricanes and they've got all, you know, so everybody's got their thing. So it's something to look into. What are you most vulnerable of with acts of mother nature? Take a look, see if this is something that you can get covered on. It's in some areas, depending on where you are, it's going to be really more expensive. Florida hurricane insurance, flood insurance, probably going to be uh, a bit pricey. But then again, if the insurance companies can't flip the bill for all these things, then we're really all in trouble. So anyway, take a look. Uh, if you haven't seen Phil's uh, awesome little uh, uh, tips. Uh, tips, the swim tips on Instagram and TikTok, uh, Facebook, X, uh, what used to be Twitter, all those things, um, take a look. Where can you find them, Phil? And uh, they're, they're yeah. awesome. Some of them are corny as heck, but I love them. <laughs> yeah, they've run the gamut. So there might be somewhere you, you scratch your head like, what is he talking about? And then there might be others where you say, oh, he's onto something. Uh, he's onto something <laughs> here that's important. So, and you don't, I don't even know what's coming next. So uh, you'll have to subscribe, like, follow, do we all that We should really just stuff. call it the day in the life of Phil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like some days I'm like, what am I going to do at lunch? Oh, you know what? I'm going to go change my uh, internet provider. That's a swim tip right there. There you so, go. So yeah, if you like these videos, we're going to do more of them. Uh, five to 10 minute range is what we're looking for for these specific videos. So make sure you like and follow, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, sign up alerts so you don't miss the next one. Take it easy.